Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to play a video or audio file in Microsoft Access using the Windows Media Player ActiveX control. Today's question comes from Lacey in Zachary, Louisiana, one of my Platinum members. Lacey says, I know you can display pictures, but is there any way to play videos inside of an Access database? We make demo videos for a lot of our products, and it would be nice and handy if we could list them along with our products and possibly view them in there as well. Well, Lacey, yes, Windows comes with something called Windows Media Player. Now, Microsoft has depreciated a lot of Windows Media Player stuff, but there's still an ActiveX control that comes with Microsoft Access. I generally don't like to use it because it is a little clunky, but it should do the job if you just want to view videos inside your database, like product demos and stuff like that. Now, I can't promise how much longer the Windows Media Player will be shipped with Windows or Office. So it's currently 2022 and it's in my system and my machine's relatively new. But if this, you know, if you're watching this two, three years down the line, I can't guarantee they'll still have it. But let me show you what is in there right now so you can use it if you want to. It's not that hard to set up. Before we get started, though, if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video, my intro to VBA. It's 20 minutes long, teaches you all the basics, everything you need to know to get started with VBA. We literally only need one line of code in this database to play a video, but you got to know where to put it and watch intro to VBA so you know all the background, background stuff of where I show you how to put stuff. Okay, all right, here we go. Okay, so here we are in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can go grab a copy off my website if you want to, but you don't really have to. You can do this in any database you want. Let's go into Design View. I'm just going to use my main menu here, and um, I'm going to pretty much just delete all this stuff. I mean, I shouldn't delete my logo, but okay, I will. Delete all this stuff for now, which means we can delete all the code out of it too. All right? we don't need all this stuff in here. Goodbye. Okay, now... And for those of you who don't know, if you haven't watched my previous videos, the code behind the form, okay, you could find right over here too. See this little guy right there says view code, right? It's on the form design tab, slide over here. And if your window's larger, it'll look like that, view code. All right, I put it up in my quick launch toolbar up there so I can quickly get to it because I jumped to it a lot. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is add the ActiveX control which is in our ActiveX controls up here, right? Open up your toolbox, go to ActiveX controls, click on that. Now, ActiveX controls are cool, but they're not part of Access. A lot of them are distributed with Windows and the Microsoft Office. For example, you got the Microsoft Form stuff in there. You got Outlook stuff. If you got Outlook on your machine, you've got uh, all kinds of cool stuff. I've done videos before on the tree view, on the slider. Okay, the problem is, is that if you've got a bunch of different users with different versions of access, these controls might not be the same on everybody's machines. So only use this stuff if you're absolutely, absolutely sure that everyone using your database has the exact same version of Windows and Office on the machines. All right, if your workplace does that, then you're okay. And if you're planning on doing this on your own and selling it or distributing it to other people, you got to make sure they got the same version too, or it might not work. So, scroll all the way down to the bottom and find Windows Media Player right there. Now, as I said earlier, Windows Media Player has kind of been depreciated. All right, Microsoft's got a new version of their video player that came out with Windows 10, I think, and 11. But Windows Media Player is still on most machines. And I'm just doing a quick look on Wikipedia here. It looks like, yeah, as of October 2021, Windows Media Player is still included as a Windows component, so you can still use it in your applications. And as of 2021, it's going to still use a new media player application, although legacy Windows Media Player will continue to be included with Windows 11. Okay, so you're good for now, but don't be surprised if Windows Media Player is completely depreciated in a little while. Like I said, it's currently 2022, so we can get away with this right now. Okay, so pick Windows Media Player, hit okay, and there's your component. Now, a couple things. First of all, you may be tempted to resize this. Don't. All right, it's a little bit of a bug. If you try to resize this thing, it usually snaps back to its current size. Now, 
You can move it around, put it wherever you want to, but leave it that size. I will show in the extended cut how we can resize this thing with code, and that will work. Okay, but for the simple version, that's the size player you're getting. I'm sorry, that's just, it. it's a bug. Watch, I'll show you. All right, if we size this over here, and then we do one of these jabs, all right, like this. Okay, it looks like it resized just fine. Save it, close it. All right, open it back up again. And look at that, see, it resizes itself. Why? It's a bug. Okay, so leave it at whatever size it is in here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to slide this down just a little bit because we're going to put a text box up here with our file name in it. First, let's give this guy a good name. I don't like Windows Media Player Zero. Let's change it to just WMP. Much shorter, much easier. Don't change some of these other things like Windows Media Player is the OLE class. This thing here, leave that stuff alone. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can double click on this to get some other options in here, like volume settings and stuff. You can play with all these settings on your own time. There's, you know, some different options in here. If you Google search Windows Media Player ActiveX Control, you will find some other code and stuff online. I could very easily do a full class on this an hour long, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> okay, so let's put a text box up here that will put our file name in. Okay, and we'll call this guy file name. Okay, we'll make it about yay big. And I'm going to set uh, a default value. Now I've got my database running here off of my desktop. Okay, and I grab one of my other videos. This is null.mp4. Uh, it's uh, a video I released, I think last week about null values or a couple weeks ago. All right. Uh, if you double click on this, you'll see it play. Welcome to another fast tips video brought to you by access okay. learning. All right, good enough. So I'm going to play it in the current folder, whatever my database's current folder is, so I can use my current project.path trick that I showed you in a previous video as well. So I'm going to set the default value to this. Default value is going to be null.mp4. That's my default video. You could change it if you want to. Okay. And then I'm going to put a button right next to it right there. Cancel the wizard, and this will be my play button. So you change the file name here, and then you'll hit play. Okay, let's name this guy my play button, play BPN. And now I can resize this a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Okay, right click, build event. Here's the one line of code that we need. I'm going to type it in, then I'll explain it. All right, wmp.url equals current project dot path and backslash and file name. That's it. Now, what does this all mean? Well, WMP is the name of our control, right? Our Windows Media Player control. Dot URL. URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. It's generally used for web addresses like 599cd.com or Microsoft.com. But in this particular case, it can be either a web page address that has a valid video at it or a local file name that's a valid video. Okay, I'm going to be using a local file name, but I could very easily play something off my website here too. All right, we're going to set that URL equal to the file name is the name of the file that we specified in this text box, and I'm adding to it the current project.path and a backslash. This is whatever folder the database is in. In my case, the desktop. So this will get replaced with C colon backslash users backslash Richard backslash desktop backslash null.mp4. All right, see how that works? You could very easily hard code that yourself if you want to there. And in the extended cut, I'm going to show you how to make a playlist. We can put a bunch of videos in a list box. Okay, so save that. Close it, close it, open it up, and hit play. Welcome to go. another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Ross. Ross. In this yeah, video, all your basic controls. Okay. Talk about what now, one thing you'll notice here is that it's not very good with keyframes. Uh, a keyframe is like every 10 or 20 frames of the video is a keyframe no where the whole data. image gets redrawn. Is Usually uh, the video unknown. player just puts what, what has changed. For example, here but you sometimes I've noticed a Windows Media Luke Player, especially when you pause it, sometimes it loses it. Have, if you skip ahead, if not, it doesn't automatically my job is update the, the video refresh. One course, but it's not bad. It's a nice little tiny video player. Welcome to another fast name. Your instructor, All right, Richard stop it. You want to change it? You change file name up here. Now, if you want to resize this guy, I'm going to show you how to do that in the extended cut with some code. 
as we resize the form, it'll resize the video player to fill that space. That's just the bug in the design view where it just it always snaps back to this size. If you guys know of a solution for that, please post it down below because I, I messed with it for a while. I couldn't get it to stick. I think that's why I stopped using Windows Media Player a while ago. <laughs> but that's it. That's how you make a Windows Media Player player inside your Access databases. Now, in the extended cut, I'm going to show you how to make a playlist right over here. You can make a, we're going to make a table. It's got you know the titles in it with the file names, and they don't have to be in the current database folder. Okay, you click on one, and it's going to launch over here. All right, we'll do the resize the form. So when you resize your form, your player will resize as well. All right, I'm going to show you how to launch these externally. In other words, if you don't want to put the video player inside of Access, which I this is how I actually like to do it, I'll, we'll just take the playlist, okay, and we'll make a button down there that says play, and then it will launch whatever your default video player is on your system doesn't matter you don't need any components you don't need anything inside your database you don't need a specific video player installed on your machine okay because i prefer this guy the vlc media player plugin that's my video player of choice been using it for years and i will show you how to use this both externally and with the there they have a plugin too when you install vlc media player it also drops a plugin that you can use in access so this will all be covered in the extended cut. If you want to learn how to do video playing inside of Access, this will be the video for you. Still remembers and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. We're approaching 300 of them, I think, now. There's a lot. A lot of stuff to watch. Gold members, you can download these databases, and you get access to my Code Vault and a lot of other cool perks. Plus, every member, Silver and up, gets some free classes. So stop by my website if you're a member and set up your account. All right, that's it. I hope you guys learned something today, and we'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, 
find me on Twitter and, of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.